Hello everyone, I am uh, here again, uh, Sam Mohammed. Um, uh, tonight we are going to um, talk about uh, how to make your suturing a little slicker. Uh, I've noticed that, uh, and, and it's something that uh, I have struggled with uh, personally when I um, started in um, surgery and implantology, uh, is suturing. Um, just to be clear from the start that suturing is all about um, designing your flap uh, correctly so that you can close it properly. Now, it's important that we um, look into uh, ways of making sure that our flaps uh, are designed uh, to be uh, closed properly um, from the outset. Uh, so if your flap is designed properly, then you will be able to close it properly. Um, so it's all about planning from the start how you're going to uh, uh, suture that flap once you've raised it. Um, so I always say, and the flap will set you free. So if you design the flap from the start correctly, then everything will go smoothly, hopefully, and then you'll be able to close that flap and suture it properly and easily without much stress. Now the instruments that you can see in front of you here are uh, some essential instruments that I use during suturing. It can vary between um, one practitioner to another. We all have our own little toys that we like to use. However, let's just uh, um, look at them. Obviously, we have our needle holder, right? And the needle holders can be, um, um, they could be um, uh, in many shapes or forms. I like this one. It's nice and um, and and um, small, beaked. Um, um, it's um, it's it's quite sturdy, and uh, I like using this one. Um, you can like you can really use any needle holder so long as you hold it properly. Now to hold the needle holder, you have to hold it like so, right? Okay, right. So you have to hold it like this with the finger support like that, so that you can um, you can you can use it very easily. Um, sometimes I hold it like a pen, um, like this, um, when with the needle. In, uh, at the end of it um, and this helps me direct the needle in, in a certain way once I've locked it in place um, it's, um, it, it all depends on what feels more comfortable to you so that's to hold the needle obviously some sharp scissors are like the curved ones um, and they should cut with the end there are certain ones which have a little notch at the end here to go under the suture <coughs> and then cut it um, and this is mainly for removing sutures rather than uh, cutting the uh, ends of sutures after you've um, you've put your um, you, you finished off your um, knot and ready to cut the excess um, tissue uh, holders the tissue holders could be um, uh, straight serrated like these. These are serrated ends, right, as you can see. Um, they hold the tissues quite gently. They, they have no teeth at the end. Uh, sometimes these, um, the tooth bones, which I'm going to show you now, uh, could be quite harsh on um, thin tissue. Um, and if you pull on them, they can tear the tissue. This here is serrated. It holds the tissue nicely uh, with no teeth and it holds it within the forceps with these serrations to stop it from uh, pulling away. Um, <clears throat> the toothed uh, forceps, as you can see, the, the, it's got a, um, a tooth here and a groove there. So when you hold the tissue, the tooth and the groove meet and they lock the tissue in place. I only use this if, if I have nice and thick keratinized mucosa. Uh, I wouldn't use this in thin tissue because as I'm pulling it, it could rip it uh, or cause a tear with this tooth. Okay. 
Um, retraction, I like the Pritchard. These are called Pritchard uh, retractors. Uh, one end of them is a periosteal elevator, as you can see, and the other end is the Pritchard um, um, retractor. Uh, this Pritchard retractor nicely holds uh, the flap while you're retracting um, um, before you start suturing. Um, uh, and it is, it is a nice instrument to have. Uh, there is another uh, tissue forceps uh, which has a small hole at the end. It's like a, a C shape, um, not a, a full ring, it's a C shape. Uh, the idea for this is to hold the tissue and to, uh, at the point you want the needle to enter and you put the needle through this hole, it comes out from the other side, right? And then you pull this off, it's got a little groove here, right? Uh, you've got to be pretty accurate uh, with the, with the, with the, because I find this um, really uh, tricky to use because the the little um, uh, slot at the end of this um, um, ring is is very very narrow um, and I find it I find it very very difficult to get the thread out uh, unless the thread is quite stretched you can get it out of there. Uh, but it's a helpful tool to use um, to uh, put the needle through uh, while you're holding the tissue. Okay, so these are the uh, instruments that um, are essential for um, um, starting the suturing. Okay, now we'll get these out of the way and get the suture model and uh, have a look at um, what we can do here. Now. Uh, I've got a flap here, right? Um, just a little one, um, just to um, explain or demonstrate how um, suturing is done easily. Now, the suture that I've um, um, uh, I've, um, I've brought um, today is the uh, 4O PGA. Uh, polyglycolic acid um, violet which is vicryl really but with a different name um, it's uh, a reverse cutting uh, and um, if you um, remember from the suturing um, lecture um, uh, the reverse cutting is um, the pref preferred needle design needle cross section uh, which does not um, uh, rip the, the tissue while you're suturing as well as um, you don't actually have um, uh, you, you have a, a really clean um, 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 bite of the needle um, because it's really really quite sharp and it cuts with the reverse end um, and uh, in this way it protects your flap uh, okay so um, we'll uh, we'll do this in just a moment